is going to be there. So uh, first of all, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and, and your company and how you, you fit into the, the desktop virtualization picture? Absolutely. Um, got involved uh, initially, I was with the government and uh, retired from the government. But primarily, uh, I was in the military, so I retired from the Army. Went to work in the space and uh, saw some real needs, particularly around some of the issues that have now become um, very big uh, issues today for, uh, for the IT industry. I started my company, uh, Microtech, in 2000, actually 2004, right. and uh, in the last seven years have uh, really kind of grown um, around some of the trends, but had our eye on those trends probably as long ago as five years, particularly around the data centers and, and what was happening in the data centers virtualization, and particularly around VDI, even though it wasn't called VDI way back then. Right, but, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, so, it's really so, been on fire. So did you start out partnering with like the likes of Citrix, or where? where? We started off partnering with EMC. EMC okay. was one of our uh, first partners. Wow. Uh, as VMware started to kind of gain momentum, we were uh, here in Vegas about three or four years ago at the VMware conference, and realized we needed to be a part of that. Uh, we've been uh, now today are a signature EMC Velocity partner. We're also a Cisco Gold partner. We're also an enterprise VMware partner. So we've we've hit the right partners and uh, really focused in on their solutions well, and hired people around those Tony, solutions. Tony, say, the, 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 if, if I if I know correctly, that's like the highest level for both VMware, Cisco, and EMC. There Absolutely. can't be too many partners that have all three of those pieces. Absolutely, and that's what we're so proud of is that we. Uh, we actually have a pretty good crystal ball and we anticipated movement in the right direction and uh, we are very fortunate to now be there with our partners. Okay, so if you're working with the V, the C, and the E, are you also working with the coalition, the, the VCE company? Well, and, and obviously you have to for, for the simple reason that that's where innovation looks like it's going to be coming from, is collaboration in this space is critically important because no one company uh, has got all the solutions. So the smart companies are the ones that are collaborating with other smart companies to come up with cutting edge solutions. Excellent. So uh, the, the Wikibon community actually had a call, uh, one of our, what we call our peer insights back in February, and Jason Langone of your company came on, and what we found out of that, it's not that you know desktop virtualization is going to be everywhere, and it's not ready really for prime time in every environment, but there were certain use cases that really were critical. Everybody knew call centers initially were one of the low hanging fruits, and, and more recently, government, and healthcare are, are, are two of the big areas, and I believe that's something that, that you guys are tied into. Absolutely, we have a very big footprint in the in the healthcare space, and a lot of the uh, focus that we've got in the federal government around uh, VA and their medical community, around social security, around uh, health and uh, health and human services, around uh, CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control, and we've been very focused in on helping them with their solutions, particularly around telework solutions and particularly around VDI. So, so when we look at VDI, uh, but when we looked at server virtualization, it was always about I could reduce cost. When we look at desktop virtualization, it's usually about transformation because cost is not necessarily cheaper. Hopefully it will make the overall solution and management cheaper, but it has to be transformational, something that makes things better than it was before. So when I look at you know government and, and healthcare, is it as simple as saying that it's a more secure solution or is there more, more nuance and more to it than that? I think there's a lot of analogies that you can put together. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we see it in something that we all deal with daily, and that's the price of gas. Uh, if you can affect the price of gas, what you can do is affect the ability to get more miles per gallon. And that's what we're essentially doing in our space, is we understand there's certain things we can't impact, but what we can impact is we can help our government, uh, we can help our government customer, in particular our public sector customers, and even our commercial customers, get more bang for the buck. So essentially what we're doing is increasing their efficiency increasing their ability to do more with less, which is an old term, but in fact, we're actually showing on paper ROI for how a customer can do more by using the solutions we put in place through okay. our partners like okay. EMC. So, so is that the using more of the infrastructure, using more of your people, combination of the two? It's really a combination of the three. It's okay. not just the people, it's yep. not just the infrastructure, it's ensuring that the customer walks away from that relationship feeling 100% satisfied with what they've got for what they paid. Okay. Excellent. So uh, when, when you look at the, the, the ultimate consumer of the desktop virtualization environment, it, it has to be an interface that people like. So, you know, what do you see these days? I, I've heard people here at the show talking about the transition to Windows 7, uh, you know, 
bunch of us walking around with iPads, you know, how, how does desktop yes. virtualization, you know, make the ultimate end user experience better? Well, I think it really depends on the, the solution, like you said, if it's, uh, if it's an iPad, an iPod, if it's a Windows 7, and people like what people like. And if yep. they like Windows 7, I don't care how hard you beat them over the head with an iPod, they're not going to be happy with it if they're not comfortable with it. The user experience has to be a friendly user experience because we're talking about change. And ultimately, when you've got somebody used to Windows 7 and you kind of pull the carpet off from underneath them and give them a new solution that looks and feels different, even though it might be better, it's not better for them. So what we're doing is we're trying to make absolutely sure that we keep our customer, the end user, in mind as we start to develop these to ensure that that user is happy with what they've got and that it's user friendly and that it's intuitive enough to be able to, that when the changes are made, they can get it and adapt to it quickly. Okay, so so I wonder if we can poke for a second at kind of sure. the ecosystem that you're looking at. So you know, at the hypervisor layer, you know, VMware is you know the leader when you talk about enterprise data centers. Yes. But at the desktop client, you know, Citrix has you know traditionally been the leader there. So how do, how is that kind of baking out in the environments that you're seeing today at the client level? Yeah, well, it, it, I think the essential thing is is that you've got to have a good relationship with Citrix, you've got to have a good relationship with VMware, and you've got to have a good relationship with Microsoft and there's a number of other solutions like CA now coming into play where people like what they like and uh, sometimes you just can't confuse them with the facts. They want what they want, not what they need and so if you're not helping to make that relationship better by working with each of the, the industry leaders to ensure a successful transition to a new, maybe initially less intuitive but eventually more intuitive uh, space, then you're not staying ahead of the curve. You've got to be looking at what you need to do to make that experience better. And if they've got Citrix, you've got to be looking at Citrix. If they've got Hyper-V or they've got um, VMware, it's got to be um, good and easy for them to be able to use and easy for them to make that transition. And we've worked very hard to have those relationships in place and to make those relationships good for the benefit of our customer. Okay, great. So if we, we look beyond kind of the server to the, the, the network and the storage, Cisco has a VXI initiative that they're trying the virtual, uh, ex, uh, VXI, I'm trying to remember what the mm -hmm. term means even, but it's a like virtual experience interface. Uh, and uh, on the storage side, you know, every storage vendor has their own solution. Can, can you tell us, I know you're working closely with Cisco and EMC, you know, how, how where are they succeeding in the marketplace and what are customers really, you know, liking from them or what, what deficiencies do we need to work on? In, in our particular space, the big focus is and always has been security. I mean, the federal government, public sector, state, local governments, even big companies that rely on that, um, on their information technology and their enterprise for their day-to-day -day ability to service their customers need security in place. And what we like is VDI is a very secure solution. And it allows our customer, federal customer in this particular instance, to do so much more because the data resides in the data center. So what we're actually doing is giving them access to a lot more data in a security model that makes it a lot easier to use and makes them feel comfortable that we've got their first and most important initiative in place, and that's security. Okay, so you say that it's inside the data center. Are you seeing desktop virtualization in the service providers for cloud service providers? I know from federal government has the you know cloud first model, so how do service providers in cloud fit into the whole v VDI environment? Well, and I think it really depends on the customer. In some particular instances, some customers are a little bit more comfortable with the cloud solution. Others are a little more hesitant. They're not really sure what it is. They hear people talking about the cloud. The first thing that comes to mind when you start talking to a government customer about cloud solutions is outsourcing, which it is not. Um, but sometimes it's just a little bit hard because it is a very new, it's an old practice that's a new initiative. It's, right. it's something that we've been doing for years that's kind of changed names, picked up a little bit of momentum, and it's got some real unique is built into it now that allow it to be used in a number of different scenarios. Okay. So we're finding that our customers starting to get a little bit more comfortable. We built some private cloud solutions yep. uh, that are microtech homegrown solutions that uh, we're very proud of and that we work hand in hand with Cisco and with EMC and with VMware to ensure that what we're building makes their products just that much better. Okay, so, so is, it, is it fair to say that today for the customers that really want a secure environment, that they're leaning towards the data center and that cloud is you know, a little bit down the road for them? 
I, I think some of them, it's a little closer than others. Uh, some, it's, it's, they're still you know, very concerned about it, want to know more about it, want to make absolutely sure that all the kinks have been worked out before they put it into play. And they want to make absolutely sure that they can actually measure the ROI because it's an investment for them. And uh, you know, there have been a lot of instances where people have invested in solutions that were going to save money and were going to have huge ROIs and they just never panned out. So we want to make absolutely sure that in these instances, that we can show them why it's a better solution for them and how to measure ROI in a different way, and that's through efficiency. Okay, great. Uh, so so uh, before we started, uh, you, you were telling me a little bit about how, how explosive the growth has been. I wonder if you can share with our users, you know, how that, you know, VDI, how real is it and how, how much growth are we seeing in the marketplace oh, today? We, we are absolutely, uh, I mean, amazed at, uh, at the amount of, uh, of growth that's available in VDI, particularly because there are so many variables outside of IT that are impacting it. One, the price of gas. Two, the ability to leverage uh, the information that your uh, people need to be able to do the job they're doing and to be able to provide that access to the government in our particular instance or to our customer regardless of whether they're government or not and to allow them to be able to have that data regardless of where they're sitting or what they're doing and to be able to give themselves a very full robust view of the information that they need in order to, to do the jobs that they need to do while at the same time keeping security in mind. So, uh, final question I have for you is, uh, the Wikibon community, we're always looking for, you know, what best practices or tips would you give practitioners? So, you know, when looking at, you know, betaing, uh, doing beta and mo moving out into production, you know, what, what is Microtech, uh, do you have some best practices that you might be able to share as to, you know, what do you look for in, in a solution provider? What do you look for for your infrastructure partners? And, and, you know, what should be expectation as to how that rollout looks? I think probably the one thing we look for is we look for the kind of partners that we've got with EMC, the kind of partners we've got with VMware and with Cisco and a number of our other great partners. But in this particular instance, we're looking at, at ways of staying relevant because if you're not on top of what's going on, if you're not part of the move uh, to make the system better, more efficient, cheaper, and, uh, and to be able to have access to that data, structured data in a way that makes it easy to find when you need it and makes it easy to use when you need to use it, those are the things that we're focused on. So we hire good people, we look really hard at the new technologies, we're spending for a small company an exorbitant amount on R&D and ensuring that we're staying cutting edge right along with our partners like EMC and that we've got the kind of solutions that they want to leverage when they're building out. Great. So this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon here in theCUBE from EMC World in Las Vegas with Tony Jimenez, CEO of Microtech. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. Sharing your stories about